the mega logai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. In order to look the things which our Lord, our God, has reserved and kept for us in eternity past, for the year 2019, His spiritual manna, so that our practical life of living in Christ should be made manifested to this world, since the Lord God is near. So in order to know and learn what are the things reserved and kept for us in the present Christendom of the Church Age in this great year 2019 given for us in grace, it is a privilege for the bona fide gifted pastor teacher to be in the power of immortal till the work of my Christ has been done in making you all perfect and complete to stand in the thorough knowledge of the Lord will, having fruit of righteousness unto the praise and glory of Christ. It is also the great privilege of the believers to have the privacy of the priesthood, to constantly be filled with the Spirit by the option called as rebound, so that they could walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit learning the indwelling process of which our Lord of our God has trained us, our Lord of our God has given to enjoy this true spiritual life. So let's sanctify ourselves and look into the pale wonders of the word of the Lord of our God, which is so great and unique for this highest valuable believing men in the church age. So it's your privilege to learn and to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Since Christ our Lord our God gives a great word of his in Ephesians 4 17 to teach. As Apostle Paul tells, I witness in the Lord that he shall no longer walk like the other Gentiles walk. Even today being the first day of this academic year 2019, not wishing like the way how the Gentiles would wish to think you can have a great success, great health, great prosperity. But Joshua 1.8 teaches to us, when we meditate upon the word of the Lord of our God day and night, when we are readily available to obey his every word, then our life will be a prosperous and successful one forever. Not only now, but in the time to come forever. Because He demands those who walk before Him in flawless, the Tamim condition or the Thom, what we read yesterday, which is nothing but for us, the opposite of mischief completeness, soundness, that which is absolutely fit in the sight of the Lord of our God. If we are walking in the way of Yahweh, 
in that thome condition then he is our fortified fort he is our strength he is our defense and he is our rock so dear brethren those who walk in the way of the lord of a god for him the lord of a god himself is a great fortification but the workers of iniquity that's what we were reading yesterday lawlessness the workers who work in the mannerism of ungodly standards they have been absolutely given to be undone at least in this year let us have a circumcised ear to look as mark chapter 2 verses 21 and 22 teaches to us the great lesson of our lives what we are in the church age and how we have to be so studying those things prior to that we shall have a word of prayer in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and be sure that you are been in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit and learn this great word we shall have a word of prayer and come back and learn starting with james 4:9 and then going to mark chapter 2 verses 21 and 22 infinitely holy father what a great privilege it is for us the true divine holy father for the grace which you have bestowed upon us to add one more year in our life so that not to waste this grace in the worldly lustful patterns of this flesh but rather striving for the mastery to become conformed to the image of his dear beloved son to fulfill thy prayer of john 17:10 through our lives that you shall be glorified in us and the prayer you have prayed that you have glorified in us the same thing in second thessalonians 1 8 as well that you have said i have glorified in them so father help us to live a life that could match in our inner nature the spirit and soul being renovated and uh, near oh to renovate again and again to the standards of the word according to the image of which you wanted us to be always in thy glory be thankful for this great grace O lord of time which i have given for us every day to learn thy word and to cherish and nourish in thy word so that father as we're going to grow up day by day help us to know more and more about thee and help us to transform ourselves to disown the unjust and to love the just and holy one all the days of our life to this section we pray father that lord get the whole spirit enlightened and challenge us by this message which we're going to study today which are prepared and kept for us in eternity past for the glory in christ name we pray father amen mark chapter 2 in comparison to james 4 9 Earlier than that, we need to look. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and the word is being used over here to attest, Maturomai, in Christ, by no longer or by no means still, you shall be walking or trading or peripatao, According to the rest of nations, they are walking in the vanity of their mind. The rest of nations, my unbelieving friends, also love to wish us a prosperous and successful year ahead. But the key is found in Joshua 1 8. How we have to be not only for the year, day by day, how we have to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by meditating upon His Word day and night. There is no other excuse for us. If we want to become prosperous and successful, that's what many people love to wish on the day of this. But they do not know the right way of prosperous, the right way of becoming successful. 
is found only when we meditate upon the word of the Lord our God. If we are not meditating upon the word of the Lord our God and if no matter however great we may love to wish our beloved friends, no matter however great we may think with a pure heart we want to have you in this year, great health and great success. That all seems to be like the unbelievers who walk in the vanity of their mind. The unbelievers who think their gods being made with hands. The daimonian idotes which can neither hear, neither can see, neither can smell. Like are their wishes upon us. And the way how many people will work out in the arena of brain to say the energy level will be such when you have a positive energy the energy level will be low when you have a negative energy and the people who love to think on the back of your bone there is a great influential power all these things are nothing to be counted for a great successful life what the word of the Lord our God gives for us when we have peace with that great Lord by faith alone in Christ alone. The word is very clear. Day and night meditate upon the word of the Lord our God. The word of the Lord our God is very clear. Become disciples of the word. The word of the Lord our God is true. Whether you love to consider it or take it or not. You may think the circumstances are not allowing you to become daily, to come and carry the cross of the Lord and become like the things needed for us to be in Christ. You may have all odd infinite reasons and circumstances to say, I cannot come, I cannot do this, I cannot do that because I don't want to become the disciple of the word. But dear brethren, whether you believe it or consider it or not, it is always that the Lord of a God is been openly challenged in the present evil world by following the deeds of the flesh, the first Adam. And the word of the Lord of our God tells, you can become disciples, you can do greater things than me. You have been called to be the temple of the Lord of our God. And yet we fail to believe those things because we are not able to give our life to believe by faith, to use an opportunity that has been given in our life to serve him in the persecutions and in the sufferings. In the case of Job, Job thanked the Lord for the trials that came to his life. But his wife, though she was a believer, she could not stand for the test. In the case of Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado, the three thanked the Lord for the opportunity given to him to witness. Rather than grumbling or having in their mind murmuring. To say so much we serve the Lord, yet he has given us this great punishment because they couldn't have Christ in their vessel. That is what Christ, our Lord, our God, in them. Why the people grumble today, why they murmur today, rather than having a strong faith in the word of the Lord, our God, is that they haven't seen and tasted that my Lord, our God, is good. Still, they murmur themselves. But Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado did not do so because they knew what was the power of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, those who walk flawless in his way. The same thing with Daniel. He did not go to change when the decree was given in chapter number 6, but at the word says, in the continual manner where he went to serve the Lord, he was doing the same thing day by day, continually what he was doing. Today may be in 2019 and yesterday we were in 2018, but the continual manner for the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher
we can prove them by the work says the marine mark care in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 the works of the right bona fide gifted pastor teacher is to train you up and to make you to become the disciple of the word day by day that is what we read in colossians 1 24 through 29 the same thing what we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16, Though the outward man perishes, inward man has been renewed day by day. And yet there are men who fail to do that work. And they think weekly we will assemble. No. The same work what Daniel did, he would have told for this one month, I will not worship my Lord, but I will rather bow down to that image. No. He went along to do the same continuing custom and that it what proved in Daniel chapter 10 greatly beloved of the Lord. In the church age today every believer having the sealing ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit being saved and the righteousness of Christ being inculcated for us. Calling many sons unto glory we are all the beloved sons of Christ. Therefore the word says you shall not walk like the Gentiles walk. What is the attitude of the Gentiles? Since they don't have Christ, they are not able to realize the perfect, beautiful way in which our Lord of our God will fight for us, will be our Redeemer, will be our great salvation, will be our Bakla. Without an effort, from the repose of perfect humanity while the wind of the sea was really raging a lot he arose and rebuked in the perfect humanity into the activity of essential deity a man who was wearied with his work might have been taken rest but as god he rises and with his almighty voice hushes the storm and calms the sea that is what we have been said, stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. If we stand still continually doing the work where our treasure is, there is our heart. If we continually come and take Bible doctrine and teach every day the word of the Lord our God for which we have been kept alive, though they may be hearers or not, the first day one may come, the second day two may come, or the third day no one will come but yet what you have learned teach them don't give an occasion for the flesh but give an occasion for the spirit to serve in love for the flock which has been given under your care and if you don't have that bona fide gift to do it you know very well you will either end up to become the entertaining clown or kleptes or lestes or misthotes or tupas, or canapes, or tiflos, or sheruras oriented minded pastors. The pastors who come for belly, the pastors who seek their own pleasure and life. Everyone seeketh of their wounds, said Apostle Paul in the book, in the epistle of Epish in the Philippians. But none seeketh the things that are of Christ, neither laid to their heart. So are the present pastor teachers who are entering into the pulpits for the sake of the potty belly. For the sake of having something great in their life to think that they are really the pastors but they do not know the burden of the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in the church age. And what is happening today in our pulpits? No proper fear for the trembling of the word of the Lord of a God. Therefore, whenever the occasion arises for us, it is Christ our Lord of a God, the very God, the very man, who is now even ready to meet his people's need, to hush their anxieties and remove their fears. That's what the problem with us is having anxieties and fear and not having proper faith and belief in the word of the Lord of our God for which he has made us in the church age to be the temple of the Lord. He has demanded the chief cornerstone being Christ and upon the chief cornerstone you have been built upon the doctrines of apostles and the doctrines of prophets. Ultimately making you to be holy as he is holy, demanding you to be holy as he is holy. If you have been risen with Christ, then seek those things which are above according to the image of Lord God the Father to be formed in you. Therefore, mortify 
or necromata in the Greek, put to death the deeds of your flesh. If ever you have been risen with Christ. And such great things which have been given for us in the church age demands that it is the Lord of a God who shall remove our anxieties and fears only when we trust in Him by a simple act of faith. We have little idea of how much we lose by not leaning more on the arm of Jesus day by day. Therefore, again, we get 2019 in the grace of the Lord of God. The loved ones of their family members who have departed in 2018 to be with the Lord. Particularly the young one, not the old one of a ripe age. The great plain theory for you, Mika 2.9 teaches. My glory has been gone among the men of the children because though they have been named as Jacob, they have shortened the spirit of the Lord. Though we have been named as Christ in the church age, grieving, squelching and being deceiving in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not doing the proper goal, not seeking the things of the heaven, but looking the things of the earth. For the departed ones, from there we learn for the future generations not to walk in the ungodly manner, neither in the counsel of them of ungodly. That's what he says in Ephesians 4. This is what I witness, martyr or mine, that you shall no well walk. There is no chance for you to walk like the Gentiles. And today for many Christians, the new year will be celebrated in pubs, being drunkards. And some of them dope addiction, drug addiction, in every other mannerism of the phallic cults, if those will be needed, even they will practice that as well. Because the parents have not known the doctrine, because the pastors have not known the doctrine to teach them what is the right fear of the Lord of our God and what it is he has given us, this great flesh to serve the Lord of our God in spirit and in truth. And therefore again what do you find? Again they come back this one day to be with the Lord and they say, we are doing great things to God in this one day. We come and give regularly a resolution now that we shall serve the Lord and we have passed on a great resolution for ourselves. <laughs> And come weekly once to the church, yearly once, monthly once paying the tithe, and yearly once coming and partaking in the Christmas again. How much of a damage that is happening to you without leaning or without abiding to be the word more specific. On the words of my Christ and be dwelt in him word by word, day by day. If you continue in my word, then you abide in my word. And if you don't abide in my word, you shall not know the truth, and the truth shall not set you free. In order to be free from these anxieties and fears and worries, and to have your transfiguration in Christ, renovate the standards of your thinking. Do not get fall into clutches of the snares where the people are running in their own minds and in their own thoughts of doctrines. Man made doctrines to wish you happiness, never you will be happy. No doubt in the year 2019 or coming year in the 2029, even if you can go over a decade as well, never you can be happy if you do not meditate upon the word of the Lord of God day and night. And dear brethren, the worldly things may seem to be right for you at the present circumstances, but it is the Lord God alone that reigns forever and forever. Dear brethren, we need to look the world political correctness or the things pertaining to the spiritual matters as well. It is most important for us to be obeying to the word of the Lord of our God then what the circumstances and the matters of this earth seem to be. In the great suffering of Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado, 
Napkai Nazar had to learn that God always has the final word. What he speaks, that alone will come to pass. People may go and do all mannerism of the things for them to have a great, blessed, happy year for this 2019. But Lord God has the final word. Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Renovate the standards of your thinking. Not just the way how this world goes. Wearing a new apparel of your dress. Having to think from this year, I will stop this, I will stop that. No matter what our physical, moral, standard conditions you love to perform. If you don't come to renovate by becoming the Lama, the disciple of his word, which is Mantano and Didasco. Remember, Lord God has the final word. In the case of this, Nebuchadnezzar, in the case of Daniel chapter 6, the king of Babylon there as well. Lord God has the final word. Here, Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado said, Nebuchadnezzar, he did not even address O king, but they said, Nebuchadnezzar by name. If it let it be so, if our Lord of our God doesn't deliver, we shall die for him to witness the truth. But why I'm telling to you all these things today? The great word of the Lord of our God says for us, we shall not walk like the Gentiles, which they walk in the vanity of their mind. And we have today in the church age to walk in the newness of the new life. Because ultimately it is the authority of Christ and his word to reign in our pulpits from the original languages of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic being taught dogmatically, emphatically in proper dispensing technique of dispensations with the terms of isagogics, categories and exegesis. And the order is line upon line, word upon word, precept upon precept and the procedure is day by day with the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher. There is no excuse if you forgo this order, if there is no excuse if you can think you can replace any other methods or any other procedures. We have only one rule in the church. The rule which Apostle Paul mentioned for us long back. Women shall not have authority over the men. He has kept for us many great things to say, Lord our God is not an author of confusion, of unsettled minds, but he is of peace. And everything he walks out in decent manner of order. And those don't follow this rule, he says in Romans chapter 16 verse 17, you shall depart from them. And he says in Philippians 2, if there could be any other rule or way, Lord our God would reveal to us, but there is no other way apart from making you to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to the, f to the future glory of Christ being reflected on this earth and even in the ages to come one upon the another to show forth us as object of his grace he has kept us to be for his glory not only on this earth through the church to be manifested to become the professors to the angels but also every breath we go through like Christ on this earth in our day to day life you have two way application one towards the heaven, the other towards the earth. So both the way between the believers and the entire angelic host will learn from you. And for the unbelievers as well, you are here to witness what is the truth. And that's how you and I have been given in this church age, this great privilege in answering back to this angelic conflict that it is the Lord of a God who has the final word. So, when Nebuchadnezzar saw the three men walking loose in his furnace, and a fourth one like the Son of God, he had them come out, and he and his officials could all testify how Lord of God delivered his servants, those who trust in him, and frustrates the evil plans. That's why what a great assurance we have in the church age. We have been indwelled by the Trinity, the Satan, the wicked one cannot even touch you. If you did not know the strategies of the word of the Lord of a God, then never you will know 
the cunning fables of Satan. And when you do not know the cunning fables of Satan, never you will know how to frustrate its plans. And that's what we find over here. By not abiding in the word of the Lord of God, you are losing that idea of a little one, how much you are losing, you can never calculate if you are not becoming the disciples of the word. Therefore he says, we are easily terrified. When you know what you are, when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free, why you will get terrified to this evil? When you are doing properly your work, walking flawless, then Lord of God is our fortified fort for you. If he is our fortified fortification for us, then why we worry to look about the threats, the trials, the persecutions, the sufferings that come for us, not only in the new year, which was also in the, in the, in the old year, those who love to live the use of your life, which will be for them till they die because they have to witness the truth and satan will be worried upon them those who walk in the word of the lord of god by knowing the truth so that the truth can set them free it is not worried those who are already into their party the party who are walking according to the vanity of their mind who are walking according to the mischiefs of this world being made by man the man-made traditions and whether you love to take it or not the greater you walk in the man-made traditions the greater you are producing mischief and satan will not worry about you at all in fact indeed it will make your heart to be compromised to say you're serving the lord but when you come to know the truth then it starts to worry about you that's why in our pulpits today word upon word line upon line precept upon precept from the original languages of the scriptures to be taught daily is almost all a phase doubt. You don't find any churches today who could follow the strict rule to teach the word of the Lord of God day by day. Morning one hour, evening one hour. Asking them to pay the tithe of their time rather than the tithes which is no way concerned in the church age for tithes. Do you know what a great responsibility you have upon your shoulders if you are a pastor teacher and if you don't train them up to become perfect and complete? Acts chapter 20 verses 24 through 32 teaches to us the blood of their account will be accounted for you because you haven't blown the trumpet faithfully. You have played for them harp and lyre, but you haven't played for them the trumpet sound so that they could be preparing themselves day by day for the glory of the Lord our God. Then it is better for you not to become the church member or the pastor, in fact indeed, to far away think that you are now the shepherd by your overnight visions or dreams what you had. It will be better for you all, all the time to think not to become many men as teachers. You have Maison Krima, greater judgment. And promoting even a slightest degree of your negligence of backsliding in your heart towards the right responsibility of the word of the Lord of a God, there itself begins your weakness of your flesh, which rottens out. Not to get compromised even in the slightest thought of your mind to say, I cannot do today. But Christ our Lord of God through Apostle Paul teaches in Philippians 4.13 that we can do all things through Christ, the Christ alone who strengthens us. That's what the problem with us is. We don't love in the strengthening process of the word of the Lord of God day by day. We do not know really to tell for many pastors who are waiting in the pulpits they do not even know what is the great power of this infallible and inerrant word of the lord of a god therefore he says the heaven and the earth will wash off but my word will abide forever so we are demanded to continue with that word that word is a medicine to our flesh that word is a marrow to our bones that word is our eyesight to our eyes that word of the lord of a god is enough 
and that word alone shall reign forever and forever and that word alone is enough for us to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit that by breath And if we are not matching to that word, and if you go back to look and think, I have done the work of the Lord, I have done the great duty of Christ, you are mistaken yourself like the way the morons mistake, like the way how the man who drinks and eats in his dream, but yet he wakes up, he's still hungry and he's still thirsty. Why? Because they're walking in the unsettled mind. They are learning in the process of unsettled thoughts. What it has to be the pulpit, the ground and pillar of truth. Why the people come to the church to give their spiritual sacrifice. Why they seek their master who is the past teacher for them so that they can come and seek and learn from him the knowledge of Bible doctrine being taught in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic not for any other things. Marrying, burying is a part of the grace that he can bestow upon them. But his primary function is to always provide for them the right word of the Lord of a God. Jeremiah 3.15, Acts chapter 20 verses 26 through 28. The same thing again you will find again in Malachi 2.7. And in Jeremiah 3.15 is so great and strong. The shepherds for what cause he has given to us. They have been given to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. They shall reign over you in knowledge and in understanding. There is no way any other excuse for you to say, I couldn't know this, I couldn't know that. Then how you became a shepherd? You became a shepherd for your belly. You became a shepherd for your own lustful patterns. You became a shepherd to satisfy your own life to think that I should be occupied in a job on this earth. I cannot find qualified for me in any other place in this world. Let me become a pastor. Let me show forth my pious life so that the men of this earth are easily deceived. And settling in a church, asking even his wife also to pay the money for him, because she is also a reverend and he is also a reverend, and the morons want to make women reverent. And for that you charge some money, because she is working with you. And the elders who come into the church without even having the knowledge, neither the fear of the word of the Lord of our God in their lives for approbation, lust and power, lust, will have tough time at the judgment seat of Christ. But Lord God's word will be final all the time. Because his word alone shall abide forever and forever. The history pages of men are clearly evident for us how they lost when they fought against my Lord. Right from the beginning of Exodus we look how they settled in the time of Joshua and Judges. Against the word none could stand. The same thing applies even today for us. Against his word we cannot stand. We cannot even imagine either to stand. Though the people may come like a bunch of idiots to wish you prosperous and successful life ahead in this new year, but without meditating the word of the Lord of our God and being obedient for his word day and night, you cannot and never can become prosperous, neither successful. That is his word. And against his word, no matter however you may try to cook up, you cannot truly really grow up. Therefore, dear brethren, if Christ our Lord our God is in us, if he is the ultima for us being occupied, and if he is the one wherewith we have been there sharing his happiness and looking upon for the men to come and understand the grace that has been bestowed upon us through his glory to witness him on this earth, then whatsoever you will ask, it will be fulfilled. And you know at that time what you will ask? You will ask, to cross-check you whether you're walking according to the vanity of the mind of these unbelievers, traditions being made by man, or you're walking like the true word of the Lord of a God, which shall reign forever and forever through his word. And how it reigns through the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the one who is readily available to teach the word, 
the one who is readily available to preach the word because that's his ultima that's his work and if you don't go in those standards if you don't learn from those standards then never you will understand though you may come to celebrate next year again new year in the same terms but you are destroying your own spiritual life in Christ the physical life though it may perish the inner mind to be renewed that's the spiritual life and the greater you fail to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day, the greater you will fail to realize what our Lord our God had made and kept for you in eternity past. It is not just the few, the pastor teachers or the evangelists in the church age of the permanence of the spiritual gifts. But every believer is in full-time Christian ministry. Every believer, by default, they are ambassadors to the Lord. Every believer, they have been called to be the kingship. Every believer, they have been called to be the privacy of the priesthood to confess their sins. And every believer, they have been predestined to the ministry of reconciliation, ambassadorship. Every believer has this great work in the church age. And you need to wake up to look what is it we are having still in this church age, the things that have been left out. Doesn't he say in the book of Revelation for us, come back and take care of your first love. The things which are dead and gone, let it go, but you have something greater ahead, look upon that. And certainly protect them, lest they also should be put to death. We really have a great things for us in the church age. Because Christ our Lord our God is the unique vessel who, who, who is unique who should dwell in our vessel. Therefore, dear brethren, we are being so terrified. Every breath of wind, every wave, every cloud which agitates and depresses us. Instead of calmly lying down and responding beside our God, our Lord, we are full of terror and perplexity because we don't believe His word believe his word we do not know what is his word if we know his word then only we can believe his word and since we do not know his word how we could ever believe his word that's the right work what we are given to the pastor teachers to train you up to make them disciples and therefore we look Instead of using the storm of an occasion for trusting him, as in Mark chapter 4, we make it an occasion for doubting him. One more day being added in our life. Not to doubt why he has kept you alive. But to trust the reason for which he has kept you alive, to witness his word, to witness his truth. Spread forth like a sweet-smelling fragrance wherever you go. Become the light and salt principle of this earth. And there can never be any other method, there can never be any other procedure than to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of God. To grow from milk then to bread and from bread to meat, strong meat. If you are doubting still, you are either in the stage, either you haven't entered into the milk as well, either. Far less you can think you have been there in the stages of meat. Quoting, memorizing the scriptures is not practically realizing those scriptures, walking in our lives, awaiting for the glory of the Lord our God to be performed in our lives is what you and I have been kept alive. That's why we have been mandated again and again, walk not like these Gentiles who walk in the vanity of their mind. Why it is vanity? You may think the moral standards of them are great as well. We can follow them. No. The name Yahweh itself is a gift of revolution given to the sinful mankind. Any other thing what Satan comes to teach to you is been duplicated from the Bible 
and the legendary myths what they write they have been reigning in their minds therefore they have been called vanity of their minds and how many are of them they are really interested to know that we are not dealing with the doctrine of demons but with the doctrine of Christ then they would go back to the original languages of the scriptures and they would cross check is it so or not like the Bereans who cross checked when Apostle Paul was teaching to them is it so or not why this things for us in the church age because we have to be alert like a devouring like a roaring lion and a devouring fire, Satan wants to take you out. It wants to burn you up into the burning lake of fire if you are an unbeliever. And for a believer, at the judgment seat of Christ, your rewards to be burnt up. But Christ our Lord our God is the greatest devouring fire. He has given for you everything to learn. And what the word teaches for us that if you are doubting then you can never learn the trials and the persecutions given to you and why you doubt you doubt because you do not have the love neither the fear of the Lord's word doesn't he say when he was resuscitating those who were dead he says to them do you have belief do you have faith and faith is what doctrine the mind of Christ and if you have faith, what you do? You will believe that it will come to pass like Rahab, the way how she had. The way how Sarah had. The way how we have to have. Being kept alive today, again tomorrow as well. Why we walk by faith and not by sight? Because we need to complete the entire Bible from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. And those who fear the Lord of our God is going to increase their years and days. And what for? To learn his mind from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, being taught every day. The details of life are the grace upon grace for you. By that we meant to say, the great doctrine result of your thinking upon them. That's why we read in Luke chapter 4, when he gives a simple account for us. Taking the things as the way they come. When he said, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your ears, they gave him the scroll of Isaiah, which was not the scroll of either Zephaniah or Malachi or Habakkuk. It was a regular order for them to give the scroll of Isaiah. So that was the book they were reading. So they gave him the book of Isaiah. And depending upon that, he took the verse to quote of Isaiah chapter 60. And he tells today it has been fulfilled. After reading it, he did not stand. He went to sit. The point what we learned from there, by that we meant to say, we need to settle our lives in the word of the Lord of our God, not just to take and read and to stand. We need to make it to be applicable to our lives. We need to make it to believe, to believe, to believe. Nothing on this earth can be any other evidence for you apart from Lord God's final word. And as given for us in this Bible, and as given for us in the prayer of Baltimore privileges for this church age, and he has given for us above all, not only the completion of the canon of scripture, the indwelling trinity, the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by that we mean by getting united into the royal family of God, the baptism of Christ, unique spiritual life, and the spirit of Christ to renovate our standards according to the word of the Lord of our God, and we, through his word alone, we can reach what he has designed in us to be achieved. And we have this great word for us as our life. Nothing on this earth could be tastier for you than the word of the Lord of our God. David writes, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is more sweeter than honeycomb, more to be desired, more to be tested. Because the world on this earth is filled with the terms pertaining to evil, because our framework itself is of evil, but he has made us in the image of God. Though we have marred that image, he wants in us the things pertaining to be perfection in every mannerism of his knowledge. Therefore, he says in Ephesians 3, 8 through 11, the manifold wisdom of the Lord of God to be taught in its much variegated colored wisdom of truth. And therefore, he wants us in the terms of righteousness to be perfect, and he wants in the terms of his holiness to be perfect. There is no excuse if you are not following the standards in this church age. Therefore, dear brethren, 
Apostle Paul believes for us to teach that in Ephesians chapter 4, in comparison to this new year, to Mark chapter 2, we learn in Mark chapter 2, verse 21, No man seweth a piece of new cloth on the old garment. That means we meant to say what? After believing in Christ, we have been given new clothes. We have to not be just wearing a simple pieces of new patches upon our old garments. The word of the Lord of God says through Apostle Paul for us, when we learn those things in Ephesians 4, 23-24, throw away, put off your old clothes, put on the new man. And in case if you put a new piece that has been filled, it up with with it up taketh away from the world world one and the rent is made worse here we look in the original greek the translation goes something for us it says and no one patch of shred or bruster unstrunk is sieving on the cloak of old if at no is taking away if is lifting the one which has been there of a pleroma it the new of the world and worse split is becoming because you cannot walk by holding the two things together new and the world therefore straight the way says in Ephesians 4 put on new man put off new cloth put off old clothes put on new clothes if you stitch there, it is going to end up. Likewise, applying to this new year, the deeds that were shortcomings for you in the old life of 2018, put out and put in a new life, a new life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It is a grace provision for you through rebound to put on the new life. Don't think all are perfect, no. We are reaching perfection, but we need to be always transformed metamorphomai day by day in the word of the Lord of our God. We do grieve and squelch and lie and deceive to the indwelling trinity of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but yet we use the privacy of our priesthood because the known sins and the unknown sins which are going to come in the future, Christ of the Lord of our God paid it for full on the cross. But that's the great, great, great challenge for us not to grieve, not to squelch, not to deceive the indwelling trinity. Therefore, constantly be filled with the Spirit, put on the new man, think upon the things that are of the above, not of the earth. Therefore, the old life is gone, look upon the new life. The new life from this day which begins for you in your calendar. Ask the Lord of our God to make your days to be counted to the righteous glory of Him. Do not just live like the unbelievers who live to think. Tomorrow we die, lust, drink and enjoy today. <laughs> but the word of the Lord of God says, even in your eating and drinking, even in the minute details of your life, give glory to God the Father in heaven. Because it demands to be done in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whatever you are calm enough and relaxing enough to perform it, it is the presence of Lord God the Father in heaven to do through you for His glory, even if you go to the minute details of His life. Because it is His life, because it is His flesh. The sanctification of the food which people will love to give for us. We ask Lord God the Father to sanctify, especially the one who prepared with the hands on the mind what it goes. Because we are here to perform the work of the Lord of God faithfully. So that we shall not be hindered for his further work. And even that he prepared and kept for us in eternity past to the praise of his glory. Because it is his workman. Therefore he says, my righteousness is the heritage for my servants. In Isaiah 54, 17. Because of his righteousness which we are now the church as believers for his servants. Therefore, it demands for us not to put the details of the old garment and patch it up with a new garment over there. And he gives one more example for the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. And here we find the word for new again, neon, the ang one, the refreshing one, into the bottles of old. If ever you put the wine, it is going to burst up the neos, the old ones, and the wine is spilling, and the bottles shall be perishing, destroyed. Therefore, but with wine ang into the bottles, again he uses the word new, is drained. That is, it is being castable. Again here he uses the word kainas. Here we find the importance, the way how he is going to put 
that the neos the new man being born at the moment of salvation demands the kind of specialty of day by day breathing in the word of the lord of a god because the bottles which will be marred but the new wine must be put into the new bottles alone by that he meant to say the breathing ministry of lord god the holy spirit demands the new man kinekatesis not the neos neos may be new but you have been called to move from neos to kinos you have been called to move from anthropological concept into the christological concept therefore you have been demanded from the details of this earth which are of soilish into transforming of the heaven which is of the lord god's glorious beauty therefore these things are most needed for us dear brethren he says the new wine must be put into new bottles and that is what we have been made new in christ and this new one the ang and refresh a uh, refreshing one should be put always into the kainas breathing process and that's what he says very specifically for us when we have been having that come in christ not doubting about him we would put upon the new clothes and with the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath why we need to take newly fresh again and again because we do sin whenever we sin we lose the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit but his dwelling is permanent and whenever we sin we lose therefore we use the privacy of priesthood to come back into that fellowship therefore dear brethren in that great example of mark chapter 4 verse number 39 no sooner does some trifling trouble arise then we think that we are going to perish although our lord of god assures us that he has numbered the very hairs of our head and therefore well may he say to us as he said to his disciples why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith it would indeed seem at times as though we had no faith but oh his tender love he is ever need to shield and succor us even though our unbelieving hearts are so ready to doubt his word he does not deal with us according to our poor thoughts of him but according to his own perfect love towards us and this is the solace and stay of our souls in passing across life's stormy sea homeward to our eternal rest christ is in the vessel let this ever suffice for us he is with us as he was there in the vessel of the disciples when they were crossing that sea like was even we are also crossing this sea of life in the pilgrimage trip and remember christ our lord our god is there with us and he is our very suffice and since he is our very suffice his word is enough therefore we find in john chapter 18 verses 21 to teach why you ask me ask them who have perceived and had who are aware about the doctrine what i thought to them the same thing would be for the church age believers when we go back home it is not just how much they have done it is what the doctrine they have in their soul and spirit when they go back home it is what the world should witness and through us the world should be witness the glorious gospel of christ so that they could believe upon my lord not only just believing upon my lord they should come to realize that we are one in essence with god the father and that's a very very great prayer for us in john chapter 17 which constantly teach to us that be filled with the spirit or not to grieve and squelch or deceive the indwelling trinity of lord god the holy spirit because he demands always our walk to walk like the way he wants to be blameless he doesn't want us to walk in the way of mischief grieving and squelching and deceiving lord god the holy spirit is squelching therefore he says in verse number 18 of ephesians 4 their understanding their dinonia is been estranged and that is what he says it is been estranged because they have been darkened and that is what the word called as eschatos which is been called for them to be blind or darkened and what else we find that darkened and being alienated estranged from the life of god 
again we find over here the word for life is zoe not bios the life which has been called for bios is the vagrant brakadakai being mentioned for us in first john 2 17 but zoe is the life which has been mentioned for us in the terms pertaining to when we believe in christ that we shall have this great blessed life therefore here we find the word for us which has been called in Ephesians 4 18 darkened and the word meant to say dear brethren which is of a great scopas which should be a scopas because that it is a life where these people they are living being darkened the darkness which is so great in their midst that they are not able to see the light and why they are not able to see the light because they are loving darkness therefore dear brethren we find this word for us to call having the understanding darkened and this understanding darkened is cortizo or scotizo which is what to be covered with darkness or to darkened metaphorically the eyes the understanding of the mind and of the things pertaining to the nature as heavenly bodies as deprived of light in the present Christendom though we have been called to be the fellowship of light God the Holy Spirit breath by breath we are also following the same standards of scotizo or e scotizo and furthermore they have been alienated from the life of God and it goes to write with a grieving heart of him to teach us how we could walk like unbelievers though we have so much of great knowledge of the word and because of the ignorance that is being in them and because of the callousness which is nothing but hardness of their heart they haven't loved to walk like Christ and furthermore we find who being past feeling have given themselves over to lustrousness or wanton and sorassal gear into the vocation of uncleanliness which is all mannerism of greed but you have not so learnt Christ that's the conjunction of contrast if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ then put off concerning the former conversation of old man no old garments you cannot patch up with a new garment when you love to remove that new garment the entire old garment will be torn apart the old garment is old put off put on the new man the new man which we use the word again kainas in mark chapter 2 it says for us it demands the breathing process of you being made new regeneration is not enough but your spirit demands day by day breathing and that spirit which demands day by day breathing dear brethren that is the space being purchased by the Lord and you cannot give it for rent for the demons or for the devils how are we going to give your soul for demons by not knowing the truth anything that is contrary to the mind of Christ that is you're giving space to demands and why and how and where it is contrary to the mind of Christ because you're not being taught from the original languages of the scriptures some men think we are having a great service in the church we need to go and attend and they're allowed to regenerate by teaching them Philippians 3 12 and 13 all things are passed away the new things will come for us and forgetting those things which are behind and some of them will love to quote revolution and some of them will call up to quote whatever it would come to their mind but it's a day by day renovation of the standards of our thinking no matter however new wine it may be it demands new bottles that is what kainas neos and kainas goes hand in hand we have been demanded as kainiketesis, not neos. And that kainas demands day by day breathing, day by day breathing, day by day learning the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore, put off the old conversation, which is corrupt. The word is very clear, corrupt. 
fetero man, in accord with the desires epitomized of the flesh, which is always delusion, decide, decisiveness. And where we have to be? Regenerated, ananya o. Yet in the spirit of the mind of you. And furthermore, that you put on the new man, which is after Lord God being created in righteousness and in the true holiness. Or this is goes for us, Kai Hosietis Tes Aletia. Because we have been ketesis in Dikaya Sune Kai Hosietis Tes Aletia. To be more specific, Kata Tion Ketesis and Dikaya Sune Kai Hosietis Tes Aletia. What a great privilege it is for us. We have been demanded not to walk like the Gentiles, but to put on the new man, because the world should know what we are in Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, it says in verse number 48 of 1 Corinthians 15, the earthly such are also they that of the earth, earthly one, and as the heavenly such are also they are of the heavenly. But in Acts chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 we look, they disowned, they rejected, and the word for disown there in the Greek says for us, because of his own subject towards the master he rejected, because he knew the master yet he rejected. Therefore they disowned and they choose the flesh one instead of the holy and the spiritual one. Therefore we find in First Peter when he says the just for the unjust. So they are disowned now to take unjust before the just one. That's what he reprimands them. The same thing today as well in the church age, though we have been given one more day and one more year in our life. Are you choosing the unjust standard still rather than the holy and pious ones in the word of the Lord of God? And that is what you need to be aware about it. The just for the unjust. So many days of your life without walking in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit, neither becoming his disciples, the word of the Lord of a God, you might have walked like the unjust. But from right now at least, carry up your cross and become the disciples of the word. The right bona fide duty of the pastor teachers from now at least to wake up to teach the word every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. There is no excuse for us when we stand in his presence because James 3 1 says greater judgment, greater punishment for them who would love to become teachers but being not aware what is the real duty of the pastor teacher in this church age. Therefore dear brethren to conclude our words in James chapter 4 verse 9 which teaches to us all the time to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord of a God, and he shall exalt us. But those who are wretched, the one who would realize their own misery, and if they would pantheo, mourning to mourn upon the death of a friend, the breast beating, so that they could lament to wait, says those who are running misery and those who are mourning Pantheo and those who are lamenting it is better for them because your laughter will be turned into mourning if you don't wake up and give to submit yourselves drawing nigh unto God at least this year make up your time to draw nigh unto the Lord of a God. Cleanse your hands and you know very well whenever you sin, purify your hearts because you are coming with the Lord of a God in Dipsukai, double mind. Coming only for the lustful pleasures to be fulfilled but not knowing the desires of the true word of the Lord of a God to make you like Christ all this earth. To confirm the image of his dear beloved son in you. Since you have the sperm of Christ, you are demanded to walk like Christ. Therefore, he says, if you don't wake up, the one who are 
running in their own miseries by rejecting the word. And though their deaths in a family don't want to come back to the word, lament because the laughter of you will become into intense suffering and a painful one. And the one let him be looking upon the word and if he doesn't look upon the word it will become a pervert corruption. The joy of him, the joy of him will become the great sadness and the laughter of him will become corrupted into mourning pantheons. Therefore he says humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Don't waste this grace which you have been still kept alive. Today is the day of salvation for those who haven't believed in my Christ. For believers to walk a life of free from every mannerism of sickness. Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 4 which teaches to us. Come and abide in the Bible class day by day for the praise of his glory in his grace. And nothing else on this earth is more needed for us than to be thankful for which cause he has kept us alive till his work could be done in our lives. And that's what Apostle Paul believed that we are immortal till the work of my Christ has been done in their lives. So we also believe to walk in the same rule, to honor his word above his name, and to be always in the kinekatesis of these people to realize the breathing process in your soul, day in and day out. Once again, we wish you all a happy new year, E-A-R, rather than making up your lives not to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and end up in mourning. James 4.9 is a straight caution of warning if you don't come to Bible class every day. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to return to Lord God, the Father, that to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sothan Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one Dharma from my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two, Dharma to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, you not worry. Besides nature, the entire Anjali Coast will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the tips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to enter into thy grace of one more year being added to our lives. And above all, for the Hanukkah festival being celebrated from 25th to 1st. Father, though the people may not know the value of it, yet allow the feast of dedication and the feast of light, so that, Father, once again they could take in the word of the Lord our God and they could dedicate themselves to thy glory. So that, Sovereign Lord, for which cause you have kept us alive, to humble ourselves so that you could exalt us, and not to go in our pride, O Lord, because you have said a great caution of warning for us in James 4, 8 and 9. When we draw nigh unto you, you are going to draw nigh unto us, and yet we fear for our Lord, yet by thy grace you give us chance to come back through warning and intensified discipline. And yet there are men who don't understand about these things, O Lord, you give them sin unto death. And Father, help us to learn thy word accurately at this, at this year, so that the disciples are walking to thy word, O Lord, let them become for the fruit of righteousness being filled to thy glory and to thy praise. Such as diligently, O Lord, and see if there is an offense in us, and expound us day by day, not even a day to go waste, when we come to love to learn thy word, day by day, for, thy, for which we are prepared and kept thy eternal manna in eternity past. In Christ's matchless, precious, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms. Amen.